Hey, what's up everyone? Alyssa Knight here. Thanks for coming back and joining us for this uh, next portion of the presentations at API Days New York. We're glad to have you. Uh, so the first portion of the, the presentations in this track have been centered around API attacks, uh, the importance of artificial intelligence and machine learning in API security. We had different presenters presenting on the different approaches to API security. Um, how, you know, some that believe in uh, different um, ways in which it should be implemented uh, and what works and what doesn't work. And they, like I said in the first por portion, that everyone's going to have a different approach. Everyone's going to have a different opinion. And that's what's great about API Days is you get feedback from all these different viewpoints and you can formulate your own uh, decision based on that. So next, our, uh, we're, we've got Rob Dickinson, CTO and co-founder of Resurface Labs. Uh, Rob is going to be presenting on monitoring and logging and the importance of that in API security, which as, as a packet monkey and in, in log analyst, uh, uh, I, I love the, the fact that he's going to be presenting on this. And it's so important. So Rob, without further ado, I will give you the stage. Good luck. Looking forward to it. Thanks so much, Alyssa. Uh, really, really appreciate the, the chance to be here and to share some of our passions and, and ideas around uh, logging and security. And so we're going to be talking specifically about uh, OWASP top 10 and specifically number 10 on that list. I'm Rob Dickinson, CTO at Resurface Labs. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at, at Rob from Boulder or email Rob at Resurface.io after this talk. And what we're going to be talking about in a nutshell, what is OWASP A10? Um, it's it's one of the more controversial and less understood uh, items in the top 10. We're going to be talking about some of the major challenges that get dragged along with, with those really good ideas, and then some concrete best practices about how to put some of these uh, it, it, ideas into your organization effectively. And then we'll have some time for, for QA at the end. So I'm sure we've all seen the, the OWASP top 10 uh, before. Uh, if you haven't, you should feel bad. Uh, just kidding. But um, uh, we're not going to go through this whole list because we're really just focusing on on A10 here. Um, the only thing to say about the rest of the list, um, and, and part of the reason why A10 is a little controversial, um, is that it's, in some ways, it's much deeper and much bigger than some of the other uh, areas on the top 10. So that's why I really appreciate having this opportunity to really go deep into uh, what that's really all about. When you look at the public definition about what A10 is really about, we're talking about insufficient logging and monitoring. And this is the, the, the literal text that starts with that, the idea that exploitation of insufficient logging and monitoring is the bedlock, bed, <laughs> bedrock of nearly every major incident. Attackers rely on lack of monitoring and timely responses to achieve their goals without being detected. Um, I've got the link here in the presentation. We'll be sharing these slides afterwards. Um, but that's really the, the heart of, of what we're talking about um, here. And that's part of why this is, we, from what we've seen, one of the least commonly addressed in the OWASP top 10. You know, you're, you're probably already using code scanners. Um, you're probably already looking for injection attacks. You're probably already um, looking at the, the vulnerability profiles of the components that you're using. Um, those are pretty well understood practices and the outcomes of those practices are pretty well understood. We're gonna put a code scanner into our CI CD process. Um, we're gonna have a vulnerability scanner um, that runs against our containers. Um, so those outcomes are relatively easy. When it comes to the the top the the A10 though, um, we're we're talking about a very very different kind of territory because we're talking about this idea of breaches, these breaches going on for a long period of time, and being able to detect these breaches and actually respond to them. So when we look at the numbers, um, how well are we doing <laughs> with these breaches? Um, it's it's kind of amazing, um, you know, to look at to look at some of the statistics, and to see that about half of the time 
breaches are coming from direct malicious attacks. Also about half the time, um, we're, we're kind of doing this to ourselves. <laughs> we have system failures, we have human failures. Um, there's unintended failures that lead to breaches. Um, a, almost as often as there are malicious people breaking in and actually stealing data. And, and that's, that's, a, that's an interesting fact to, to, to keep in mind. We'll, we'll come back to that. Um, as you might expect, a lot of these breaches involve customer PII. And so the damage that is done with these breaches is, is very large. When you then look at, at the A10 recommendation, and, and we're talking about you know, limiting attacks or limiting breaches, well, what, what kind of time scale um, are, we, are we talking about here? Um, the data that we found here from the Ponemon Institute, you know, average time to identify and contain a breach, 280 days. If that breach is caused by a malicious attack, it's going to lurk even longer, um, 315 days. Um, if we can do what seems like even not a huge uh, improvement, you know, cutting that 315 days down to less than 200 days, we have the potential to save millions of dollars to the business. Um, these are scary numbers, um, right? So the, the, and, and I think, and I think these aren't necessarily surprising. I mean, we, we see these kinds of, of issues being reported in the press. Um, and we really understand that when we're looking at the API economy, the, the, the and, and, uh, how, how this, this worldwide interconnected set of APIs fits together. Breaches are really becoming one of the classic blunders that um, that those organizations can fall call, fall victim to. As APIs eat the world, those risks of breaches only increase over time for really all the reasons that are listed here. We've got Hiram's Law. We've got APIs being used in unexpected ways. We're changing them constantly. The old ways that we had of measuring you know, and doing logging, you know, you can't just put a JavaScript agent um, into the browser that reports back the what's happening, right? There is no browser, it's an API. You have, you have no control over the device. Um, sec even security and privacy are moving targets. Um, our security uh, postures need to be getting better over time and our expectations around privacy are getting bigger all the time. So, these problems of these systemic breaches going on for long periods of time and inflicting significant financial damage to the businesses really are not going away. Um, in fact, these things are, are getting worse. Luckily, um, the, the, the A-10 gives us some official specific recommendations about how to cope with this. And so what does a sufficient logging system look like um, if we're thinking about how to mitigate these, these long-running attacks. The first thing that we need is a centralized append-only database. It needs to be centralized because the, you want to ship the logs basically from the microservice to a central location so that an attacker that gets into the microservice can't wipe all the local logs. So you need a way to preserve those logs to a central location. You also want it to be append-only because you, won't, you don't want an attacker to be able to go back and manipulate the logs in order to cover their tracks, which is a very common attack or a very common technique. That's a big reason why those attacks can linger for so long is that those attackers are relatively good at covering their tracks. The second thing that we're gonna need obviously is we're gonna need enough storage to be able to do forensic analysis against those long running attacks. That means we need a lot of storage, um, at least half a year of storage um, to, to really have any efficacy at, at all. But really, you need to be going beyond the, the average time. So more than a year is really what you should be thinking about. You're also going to want a workflow that detects and alerts you to specific activities. You're going to be collecting a lot of data here. So how do you know what data to pay attention to then becomes a, a very difficult problem to solve in of itself. The data that we're gonna have to collect um, as part of the official recommendations are, is all the data around logins, around access uh, and, and validation failures on, on those accesses, 
and then all of our high value transactions. Really being able to keep a receipt of all of those most meaningful um, activities that are being performed through the APIs, again, for a long period of time in a, in a centralized depend only secure system. Then, then there's also some um, fairly significant implementation criteria that come along with this. We need to have really good data hygiene across all the, all the log sources that are feeding into this database. If data coming in from different sources can't be reconciled with each other, that's going to present all kinds of problems. Um, and anybody who's worked with, with system logging or business analytics, you know, you, you already know this, that the, the, the health of that data and the cleanliness and hygiene of that data coming in is one of the most important things to the success of the project. And then the other one that, that really can't be ignored is that you need protections against sensitive data leakage. This database that you're creating is itself a very valuable um, digital property. And that's going to have data about your customers. It's gonna have this audit trail and you don't want customers or attackers being able to get access to that audit trail and use that audit trail as itself as a mechanism to stage attacks. The last thing <clears throat> that obviously we have to include in all of this, I mean, what we've just talked about with these first six, seven things is all the stuff that we have to build or, or configure um, in our environment. But even after we get through doing all of that, we still have to validate all of that. And then we have to actually train our personnel on how to use those logging systems actively as part of our incident plan, right? So if you're starting to feel like, wow, that, that kind of adds up to a lot that we have to do just to satisfy the A10 requirement, you're on the right track, right? Um, and this is really why A10 is consistently um, kind of underfunded or undervalued compared to the, the rest of the top 10, um, in my opinion. It's because compared to the rest of the top 10, the, the, the A10 um, recommendations really involve significant commitment, significant complexity, significant cost. This is easily one or two orders of magnitude more than you're going to have to spend for any of the other top 10 items um, just just to tick this one box um, and that is why a lot of organizations go okay great <laughs> we probably should be doing that and i guess if we had the money and the time and the resources i guess we would but we we really can't we just we need to move on and, and look at other things that's a big part of the reason why these breaches are going on for so long um, and why we're losing so much, um, so much financial damage to, to these attackers. So if I haven't convinced you just by listing out those components here, um, let me give you just a, a little bit more color about why that really is so challenging. So what we're really talking about, e even with those very clearly laid out um, uh, requirements about what we need to do, we're talking about a project it's it's inherently hard to get started and even once you collect the data which that part is kind of hard then you've got this other really hard problem of knowing what you're supposed to be looking for um, your developers who are really good at data engineering have probably not seen these security attack signatures before and your security team doesn't really know about data engineering and data plumbing it, it's it's a lot that you're going to have to get together um, to, to bring this together we're talking about data volumes here that are significantly higher than you would normally do with system logging or APM or performance management. And we're talking about having to keep this data for a long period of time. This is a distributed system. It's a big data system. Um, you know, that the, the, the fact that these are high volume doesn't make this easier. We're talking about significant assembly just to get something put together. We're then talking about significant operational support to keep this thing running. It's a multidisciplinary initiative. You're talking about involving DevOps, involving the security team, involving maybe your BI or analytics team. You have privacy concerns. You have legal concerns about the data being collected. Um, it's not just uh, it's not just adding a code scanner to a CI/CD and bam, you're done. 
Um, this is, you have to talk to a lot of people in your organization about some of these aspects that we're getting into. Um, there's a limited market for data engineering and data warehousing. All of this adds up to significant project risk. A lot of projects that we see that are doing this in-house are either way over budget or have or have failed, um, or they're using an internal thing that they know is significantly less than, than is actually needed. <clears throat> and then, especially if you build something in-house, you can see some really bad gatekeeping around the technical staff, not to throw the tech staff under the bus. Um, but if this isn't your highest priority um, to, to build and deliver this kind of system, um, then, then it's easy to kind of let this fall by the wayside. All these really add up to challenges around tools, culture, and budget. And you would think, like, even the folks that have money just to burn on this, like, you know, I don't want to throw out some of the names that, that we've talked to in conference, but we, you know, we've talked to companies that have really literally spent hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars on data engineering and data al analysis systems. And even they admit, yeah, no, nobody really has this perfectly dialed in yet because it's not just about the technology. It's really about the, the, multi, the multidisciplinary aspect, the cultural aspect, and really what this says about how your development team and your security team are working together. And, and those factors can't be addressed just by buying a tool or hiring the right kind of person. So given all that, given how steep that hill is that we have to climb, what are some reasonable, actionable best practices, not only to solve for the A10 um, set of problems to reduce our our, uh, our, our, the length of the response time for those breaches, but also to improve our APIs and our systems in general, what are the simple best practices that we can follow? We think there's really just two that are pretty simple that, that stands out. And again, this is really where it's not just about the technology, it's about the culture, it's about the tooling, and it's about using this as an opportunity to really build some bridges within your organization and really have a chance to do some amazing things together. So what you really want to do is not solve for A10 in isolation, but instead combine that thinking about attenuating those breaches and having sufficient logging and monitoring. Take that idea and fuse it with the idea of moving towards a DevSecOps culture. That really is the culture shift that A10 is recommending. It's not doing that, you know, vocally or as obviously as as you might think at first glance. But really, this is a what, what we're what we're advocating for here is a, lo a a logging and monitoring system that has value across the organization. It it has work that the dev team can do. It has work that the that the security team can do. It can provide value to both of those teams and can help bring those teams together around a common set of telemetry about how the APIs are actually being used. That means that you're not just solving for security at a very high price point, <laughs> um, which is one of the reasons, like we said, is one of the reasons why um, you know, A10 is, is kind of undersolved for. But instead now, you can solve for continuous improvement in general. And that's really what DevSecOps is, is all about, is, is continuous improvement in general. Another way of saying that is that it's not, this is not just about perimeter security. It's not just about cutting that, that breach off. It's about improving your systems so that they better resist future breaches and future attacks. That's really where the, the strong relationship and the frame drag with, with the DevOps team can really get to something much bigger and much more significant than just the security team trying to solve for A10 on its own. The other part that goes with that is rather than using a general purpose logging tool, move towards purpose-built tools that are really built with this idea in mind that are built for a DevSecOps kind of culture that are built around the idea specifically of APIs and API traffic. 
Um, Resurface Labs is one of those. That's the one that's near and dearest to our heart. But we're not the only one um, that, that's doing this. And what you're going to see with, with our style of solution is a fraction of the cost of what it would take to, to do this with generic logging. So you might think, well, this has been solved. We're just going to grab Elastic or we're going to grab Splunk and we'll throw all our data in there. And and what you're what you're not thinking about in terms of the cost is that well all those tools have to be configured for the kind of data that you're trying to deal with. You get those data hygiene problems. Um, th those are not trivial problems to resolve. You can spend a lot of time um, turning Elastic or Splunk into an, an actual solution that generates real and meaningful alerts for you. Um, you also want to be looking for systems that support the idea of zero day analysis without having to reprocess all the log data because you won't know what to look for in advance. You're not going to know what to look for until you're 100 days in or more into, into an active uh, breach. And so you need that ability to move forward and backward in time. The other thing that's different about logging for API usage versus system monitoring or system logging or performance monitoring is you really need those strong security and privacy controls because we're dealing with user data. We need role-based access. We need to be hip to things like GDPR and uh, CCPA and all the other privacy standards that, that come into that. Once we do that, again, we're, we can step back from just the idea of improving our security and we can really now improve our systems across the entire software development lifecycle. Um, I think that is an amazing call to action to actually take the observability that we have and be able to use all parts of the Buffalo, um, again, not just to attenuate an attack, but really to make our systems better. And at the end, that's what we're super excited about doing and super excited about turning A10 um, into, into a larger mission it's the idea, this idea of being able to, to, to just playing perimeter security in a very defensive way to really be able to move to a posture where you can bring your entire organization to bear about building really strong API services that will resist those attacks in the future. Thank awesome, you so much. Rob. <laughs> Thanks. First of all, love the Giphys. Thanks for including those. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, I'm really glad that you, that you submitted a, a presentation for this because I, I think it's uh, obviously, like I said, near and dear to my heart as well. Um, you know, I've done a lot of log analysis over the last two decades. And to me, your log files, whether it's an API or an IIS web server, that's where the crime scene evidence is, right? That's the evidence for your crime scene. That's the footprints in the sand. Uh, that's the fingerprints on the gun, right? Um, and yep. you can't really determine as a forensic analyst or incident responder what happened in that in that crime scene or that that attack unless you look at your logs. You know, one one question that I definitely have is, you know, why do you think that organizations are not doing this? Do you think it's it's a lack of people? Is it a lack of technology? I mean, I, I honestly, this is the first time I've seen a company present on the importance of monitoring and logging. Uh, you look at the other API security solutions that are out there, um, and everyone is sort of addressing different points of the problem and, and interdicting that API traffic and detecting and responding. This is the first time I've seen anything around logging and, and monitoring. W what do you think is the reason there? I, I think the I think the the issue is that this is a this is a problem that a lot of folks that we talk to recognize, and they they feel the pain of this. Um, they they feel the the stress of escalations being raised and not really knowing what was going on. Um, you've got the X factor of of not really sure you know how how you know you know what you design for, but you don't really know how things are being used. And that causes so much agita and so much stress, even when it's for a legitimate user, like let alone someone who's really trying to cause you harm. But the problem mm -hmm. is, to answer your question, the problem is, is that we don't have easy turnkey affordable solutions to actually solve for this. So if the answer is the, the way that I solve for that is I need to I need to pull together millions of dollars in budget 
to do a cross disciplinary team and, and that effort's going to be a huge distraction from everything else that, that we're going to do. It's just a non-starter. And your technologists are smart enough not even to suggest it because, I mean, we know that we just don't have that money under the couch cushions. You, right. you hear some of the same some of the same pushback around GDPR like what in CCPA, like those are really great ideas, but I can't just like write a check and get a solution for it yet. And so that's right. the gap that, that we need to close. Um, we, we desperately need to have better ways of dealing with these these breaches and and the and and also the, the damage that we're inflicting through ourselves um, just just through simple mistakes. But but we have to get to a solution that is actually easy to easy to adopt and, and affordable um, versus, you know, uh, a year's worth multi million dollar you know, big data adventure. Yeah, thank you very much, Rob. I really appreciate the presentation. Uh, and I definitely will be reaching out to you on social media as well. So uh, thank you very much for presenting on this important topic. And definitely hope to see you at a future API Days event as well.